to the to the sermon, and I just I'll give you a little bit of a uh, overview of what we're going to be talking about. The title of the message is "Articles of Faith versus Constitution and Bylaws." Doesn't sound very exciting, does? <laughs> I don't feel like uh, anyone tuning in on live stream. We we know um, have live stream on the two different Facebook pages and two different YouTube pages. And um, so you never know who's watching. Don't seem like this is one that uh, people will stay tuned into very long. Maybe, maybe you never know. Uh, but certainly some of our regulars and uh, friends and uh, church members that, that tune in uh, might be helpful to them. I mean, it could be helpful for anybody as we talk about some of these things. Uh, but that's that's what it applies to most primarily. Going to be talking about how it applies to us, and why we do what we do. This is what we've been talking about. I didn't originally mean to start a series. In fact, uh, I remember I was looking back a little bit and remembered how it started. I, I was preaching on uh, starting starting fresh. Uh, you know, sometimes you got to like start fresh. And that led me to thinking about the because the application was that as a church, you know, sometimes a church needs to start over and be fresh. And that led me down this kind of drastic thinking of what we got to do and, and reorganizing and doing all this stuff. And then uh, the Lord, I think, calmed me down a little bit. Yeah, some of that stuff might be in the future. But first of all, we got to continue with the plan that we already had, which is get that work out in Kansas City, uh, independent, get them going, give them what they need. Uh, and then focus back on strengthening some things here. And really, I feel like the Lord gave me a little bit of a vision and, and motivation to do that. And uh, so it's perfect timing. This is the time of year where we uh, kind of celebrate the anniversary of the work out there and, and kind of are reminded about the things that we need to do. <clears throat> so in that they are going to be reorganizing. It makes me think about the organizi organization here. And they're going to use, obviously, Brother Allen's already looking through our articles of faith and bylaws and all that and, and looking into some different things. And so I think it's a good time to uh, go through them again. You know, Brother Allen and I were talking about the fact that both of us and all the churches we've ever been in, I suppose if you wanted to see it, they would make it available. But I, I never was in a church where I saw... The Articles of Faith. Sometimes uh, I, I do believe there was a time. Of course, I was already a Bible, kind of a Bible college student at that time, so I don't know if that counts. But uh, I do remember seeing a booklet of the Articles of Faith um, that were established because these that we use were established back when the BBFI had first started and they were getting organized. And so a lot of churches that were started used the, you know, they kind of like all copied off of that same one which we won't talk about how that's kind of like a denomination. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we understand. They're, they're, they're not bad. They're, they're actually really good. I still uh, like a lot of them. Some of them don't completely make sense to me because I don't know what was going on at the time that they started, uh, what kind of things were they were dealing with. Um, but we've got the Articles of Faith. We've already talked a little bit about the, under, in regards to membership, we talked about the Church Covenant. Uh, we got the Constitution and bylaws, and we want to look at all that just real briefly, biblical view on that. And uh, like I said, hopefully I won't run off anyone who's listening online, but that's that's a possibility. Although, let's be honest. <laughs> so recently, we had a few services where that we had sound issues, and I noticed there was two different services that had no sound the entire thing. And there were several people that liked it and shared it on, on uh, social media. And I was like, you just revealed that you're not even watching it. <laughs> you're just sharing it and liking it and not even watching it. So how do we even know who's watching? I don't know. All right. That's not important, though. What's important is who's here today and who's listening <laughs> to the sound of my voice. And uh, we're going to look together at, uh, from he the book of Hebrews. Look at a few places here. And if Hebrews is a place where we often go to to talk about the not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together and that's you know the importance of going to church and and all that so we're going to look at that, that a little bit and of course I preached through preached in Hebrews a lot of times <clears throat> but uh, six years ago before I became the pastor um, I had I started teaching Sunday school the Sunday school teacher stepped down 
And Brother Collins asked if I would lead the Sunday school, which I thought was a great opportunity uh, to go through the articles of faith and kind of find out what all these say. And it was the first time I had actually looked deeply at these things. And uh, uh, everyone I've talked to since then, I got a little sidetracked earlier. I was starting to say this. Uh, everyone that I've talked to about their church says, I've never seen articles of faith. I've never seen the bylaws and constitution. Uh, some people never even saw the church covenant, which is uh, kind of like, what you're supposed to know before you even join the church, but it's just these things that are, are just paperwork, you know, they're just things that don't seem necessary and we don't really make a big deal about it. In fact, a lot of times you'll go on a church's website and they've got their articles of faith pa pasted on there somewhere. And if you happen to read through it, you'll find out there's a lot of stuff in there that they don't even believe. Uh, it's just something that's been, been there historically. There's legal purposes for it and they don't even... Uh, know what it says. So this is a good opportunity, I think, to consider this, look at some of these things. I don't want to get too deep into them, but I would say this. I would like to uh, encourage Brother Allen. Uh, he might be listening to this. I talked to him a little bit about it before, but I would, I would like to, um, I'll talk with him more about this, but have him do a series in Kansas City going through the Articles of Faith. And I would actually like to do the same thing here. Um, I don't know, uh, obviously we're going through John uh, in Sunday school. I don't think I want to change that Sunday morning. Uh, probably Wednesday night will be the time to do it. And this would be a good transition from what we've been talking about and going straight into this. And I think I'll start going through our articles of faith one by one. Um, it won't be as long and t tedious, uh, flowery speech and all that kind of stuff. But we'll get right into the doctrine and what it means and what we believe about these things. Okay, so let's just jump right into articles of faith. Uh, by definition, articles of faith, if you look up the definition, it says this, a basic belief. An article of faith is a basic belief. Okay, that's, that's what it comes down to. And so let's look at Hebrews, and let's go to chapter 6. I've preached sermons on this before, and so I uh, should be somewhat familiar um, but I think it's important to come back here again in, in regards to what we're talking about. So <clears throat> let's go to chapter 6. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do, if God permit. And I'll just stop right there. There are some other things uh, um, it goes on to, to talk about. But uh, um, the, uh, in regards to the definition of this being a basic belief, Okay, uh, sorry we had somebody walk in. I got a little distracted. Uh, if we're looking at art articles of faith, which means basic beliefs that we have, uh, I don't think there's a better place in the Scripture to go to because right here, this passage literally says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of God, let us go on unto perfection. So it's actually saying that we should... Um, not just keep dwelling on these basic things, okay, the, the principal things. Now, that's not to say that they're not important, but the thing is, as Christians, we should get those down really soon, really quickly, the basic fundamentals. So, in other words, all of us should have a pretty good overview of our articles of faith, right? Whatever our basic beliefs, we should have a pretty good overview. And if you're going out preaching to people and you're sharing those things, I guarantee you, your knowledge of it's going to is going to grow because let's say someone asks you a question and you're just like I'm not really sure. Go to your pastor, you ask what that is, and and he shows you and he explains it to you. So next time that question comes up, you got it, you understand, hopefully. And so what he what Paul's saying here, I, I assume the author, the author of Hebrews is Paul, but uh, Paul says. We want to leave those principal things and go on into perfection. Now, none of us are going to be perfect as in without sin. But what he's saying is we want to strive towards more than just, hey, yeah, I got this head knowledge of the doctrines that we believe. Now, a lot of people, and, you know, sometimes I'll call these uh, 
uh, internet warriors, you know what I mean? They, they have their doctrine down. They love to debate people. And if you say something incorrectly, then they want to get on there. I know I'm guilty of it sometimes too, uh, about trying to like straighten them out and show them what the Bible says and, and all this. And some people love talking about doctrine. But they'll go and they'll study and they'll study and they'll break down all these things and they'll debate and they'll do all this and they never do anything for the Lord. They just, you know, I'm not saying it's not important, but all they want to do is talk about the minute things and they never do those things that accompany, you know, those, uh, those principal things. Okay, so if the definition of articles of faith is our basic beliefs and Hebrews here just gave us what the basic beliefs are. These are the principal things. Then, uh, then we could expect that, hey, any kind of articles of faith, something that's going to spell out what it is that we believe, is going to pretty much follow these basic things. Okay, and uh, in this text in Hebrews, he spends a fair amount of time, the writer of Hebrews, Talking about the old covenant and the new covenant. The old covenant, you know, there was there was a theocracy. God spoke to man. He spoke to the priest. He gave them some insight. In some cases, they even he just kind of put the word into their mouth, and they just it just came out. Uh, but the Old Testament, you know, they didn't really have the liberties that we do now to some degree. They were sacrifices that were made at the temple that were to cover the sins of the people, even the sins of ignorance and, and all these kinds of things. We don't have that anymore. Now the Lord fulfilled all that. Jesus, And this is what chapter six, the end of chapter 6 and chapter 7, Melchizedek and all that talks about how he, was, uh, he fulfilled all these things. He brought in the new covenant and we don't have a priest anymore. He's the priest. He's the high priest and he makes intercession for us and all that. So we have to try to uh, you know, stay, I'm not talking about losing salvation, but we need to stay in His good favor, you know, as we walk on this life. And this is what church is all about. So, Hebrews chapter 10, once we get there, we'll go on to say, you know, hey, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. This is why we meet. This is why we have church, okay? So, we're talking about our church and, and uh, organizing the work out in Kansas City gonna st is going to start. Uh, they're going to have to look and figure out what our articles of faith going to be. Okay, which means just our basic beliefs. Now, I don't believe that we should make those too specific. Okay, now, the reason I say that is because, again, there's a lot of people that just want to go down real deep and they want to get lost in these minute details. Well, these are basic beliefs, things that we should understand that are important. And let me give you an example. There's one uh, place in the Articles of Faith that uses the this kind of tricky phrase that says uh, the preservation of the saints, okay? And that's a, a Protestant term, you know, that the guys that when they came out of the Catholic uh, church, then they, you know, they had these certain doctrines that were combating that and everything. But so anyway, if you look at preservation of the saints, it gets real detailed. And a lot of people have kind of run with that and said, you know, if you're saved, then he's going to preserve you unto good works, and so you're never going to do bad things. And they'll, they'll go really far down the down this trail. Well, honestly, when you're going through all these doctrines, the articles of, our articles of faith, which I said in Sunday school, maybe we'll go over those um, a little bit more in detail. Uh, really, when it comes down to what they're trying to say with the preservation of the saints is simply this. We believe in eternal security. We believe once you're saved, you're always saved. You cannot lose your salvation. Okay? clear cut. Like that's our belief. We have reasons for believing that. We can give you a lot of scriptures. We can walk you down that road. But we don't really have to use flowery speech and, and say all these things. Just my personal opinion. Let's just clarify these simple things that we believe. And, that, and, that's, and that's one of them. So let me break these down again. Okay. Hebrews chapter 6. Look at your text again. And he deals with what are these principal things that we believe. All right, we're leaving the principal things, and so he's going to tell us what those principal things are, okay, the doctrines of Christ. Um, he says, uh, let us go into perfection, not laying again the foundation of, here we go, repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Now, these both have to do with salvation. Any church better have down 
what a person has to do to be saved. In other words, otherwise, what's the point? I mean, you know, if you can't win somebody to the Lord, if you can't, uh, somebody can't get saved by listening to the preaching and, uh, get, you know, have you ex- explain what they got to do to be saved, then what is the point? Like, where, where are you leading people? It's like the Pharisees, you know, twofold the child of hell. Like, one person's going to hell and he's just kind of taking another person with him. First and foremost, the church needs to understand what salvation is. Okay, and so he says right here, I love the way that he added to this word repentance, which a lot of people get confused on. He says, the repentance of dead works. See, the thing is, the Jews that he was talking, that Paul was talking to in those days, you can read the whole book of Galatians and see, they kept wanting to take everybody back under the law. You got to do these, you got to be circumcised, you got to keep the Sabbath, you got to do all these kinds of things. And if you don't do those, surely you can't be saved. And Paul kept wanting to pull out his hair, say, What are you talking about? You know, you were saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and what he did, his work on the cross, not your work. So the first and foremost, when we talk about repentance, what is repentance? Repenting of your dead works. Like stop thinking that your, any other works or any works at all are going to get you to heaven. Salvation is something that we have to receive through, uh, through faith in Jesus Christ. And so an understanding of what the gospel is, the death, burial, resurrection. Why did he do that? Well, he did that to pay our way uh, to eternal life. Like something like that will need to be explained. And we'll, t- we'll briefly talk about our uh, articles of faith here in a minute. But um, but this is one of the principal doctrines, obviously, salvation. Repentance toward God and faith, I mean, repentance toward, uh, from dead works and faith toward God. The second thing it talks about here in this passage is baptism. Okay, now it's interesting, it says baptisms, plural. Uh, we would have to kind of maybe clarify what we believe on baptism, and so we do actually have some stuff in, in here in our Articles of Faith, but uh, because the Bible talks about there being one baptism. Okay, so you say, well, how is it saying baptism is plural when there's only one baptism? Well, there's only one baptism into Christ. And when you're saved, which we just talked about, you're baptized into Christ. However, we do teach water baptism, and we can show through the Scripture why that's important, and how that it's just a public profession of what has happened. You are now in Christ. You are baptized in Christ. And so we are symbolizing that by taking you under the water, buried in His likeness, raised to newness of life. And so uh, we want to talk a little bit about baptism, how baptism doesn't save anybody, not the water, right? We need to be saved by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. And then we're baptized into Christ. The water is something that we do as a picture of that. And so anyway, that might be a doctrine that needs to be explained, right? But how deep do you need to go? Like uh, people go really deep, uh, trust me. Um, okay, so of doctrine of baptisms. Now this is one that throws people off a little bit. It says, and of laying on of the hands. Laying on of hands. Okay, now uh, the first thought a lot of people want to jump to is healing. Okay, there was some healing as a ministry that was going on in those days. Uh, we still do pray for people. James talks about taking somebody who's sick before the elders. They pray for them, and, um, and you know, Lord, Lord might heal them, particularly if they're being punished for a sin, and you're getting that right, and you're asking forgiveness for them. It's talking about that. Like, I'm not against that fact. We call somebody up to pray. Uh, a lot of times we'll put our hand on, not in a weird kind of transfer of some power or something like that, but just as a, you know, uh, kind of symbolically saying, I'm praying for you and I want you to, uh, <clears throat> to have this happen. But really, if you compare Scripture to Scripture, the laying on of hands is like what, uh, what Paul said to Timothy about his, his, uh, the ministry that he had that was given to him by the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Okay, so the elders or the people in authority laid their hands on him, and this happens a few times. The, word, the phrase is used a lot in the, uh, different ways in the Bible. Like sometimes laying on hands somebody is, is like arresting them, laying hands on them, like grabbing them. And sometimes it's like, you know, uh, just a symbolic passing on of something. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so when, like, when Timothy was ordained, there was a laying on the hands, an exchange here, or a symbolic, hey, like you are now in this position. Okay, it's a... And the Bible says, lay hands, lay not uh, hands suddenly on anybody, okay? Meaning, don't promote somebody to an office, 
you know, without going through the proper protocol. And the Bible does talk about when it comes to pastors and deacons, there's qualifications that we need to be aware of that um, teaches people, I mean, that teaches us what to look for in a pastor, what to look for in leadership, how they shouldn't be novices and and uh, a little bit about their attitude and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we're talking about um, the articles of faith, the uh, principal doctrines, right? Uh, salvation, baptism, laying on of hands. And then here's where people like to go way down deep and come up dry. Uh, resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgments. Okay, so there is a resurrection. We believe uh, that, you know, there. After we die, that's not the end of it. God's going to raise up our body, give us a glorified body. Uh, we have ideas about how that happens, but man, who in the world knows? It's a spiritual thing. We just talked about how uh, on Sunday the message was about our limited understanding of the spiritual. Okay, and, and uh, there's a lot we don't understand, but here's one thing I do know. The Bible says there's going to be a resurrection. I'm not going to deny the resurrection like the, uh, like the uh, Sanhedrins. No, no, what was it? The uh, uh, Sadducees. Sadducees denied uh, uh, that, that there was a resurrection. We believe in a resurrection. And one day we'll all be raised up. And then face, there will be uh, those who will face eternal judgment. Okay, everybody's going to be judged. But those who are in Christ are saved. Those who face the great white throne judgment, the final judgment, will be judged according to the works, and nobody will get to heaven if they're judged according to the works. And so, death and hell cast into the lake of fire. Revelation talks about that. So, <clears throat> sound, these are all very deep things, can be deep things. As I mention them and talk about doctrine and talk about different beliefs out there, you man, people write books, people have debates, I mean, hours and hour long uh, debates about these things. I realize they can be pretty deep and pretty tricky. Uh, but we just need to establish what are our basic beliefs in these areas that we're going to hold to. Yeah, and, and I think being Baptist, it does kind of like clarify some what's probably going to be some of our, our beliefs. But we're independent Baptists. We're not a part of a denomination. Uh, we just, this church is governed by the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and uh, uh, the leadership that's been elected trying to figure out for sure what the Bible um, says. So that gives us a lot of liberty. So these are basic. These are the basic doctrines. So just break them down into the basic fundamentals right here in Hebrews chapter 6 talks about it. And if they're basic, then we don't need to worry about overcompensating them, okay? So let me just briefly tell you some of the key uh, areas of our um, articles of faith. And like I said, these are old. These are from the 50s and at the end, one of our bylaws, which I'll talk about bylaws here in a minute, says that we're not supposed to ever change these articles of faith. So if I ever said, hey, these are doctrinally incorrect, and I do have a problem with some of the way that some of these things are worded, uh, but it's not enough to me for me to say, like, I deny what this is, is saying. Um, I don't know how much I'll get into that, but we'll, we'll briefly look at these real quick. Um, we would have to reorganize completely to be able to change our articles of faith. If I'm understanding right, if I'm understanding some of these, uh, uh, some of these bylaws. So let me real quickly give you the, the articles of faith, the, uh, the basic um, subheadings, okay? And what they'll do is they'll give an explanation of them and then a whole bunch of scriptures that are supposed to back these, uh, these thoughts up. So first of all, of the scriptures, we believe that the Holy Scriptures was written by men supernaturally inspired, that it has truth without any admixture of error for its matter. And it goes on to talk about this. By Holy Bible, we mean a collection of 66 books from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, I can make these available to anybody that wants to see them more thoroughly, but I'm just giving you an overview. By inspiration, we mean uh, that the books of the Bible were written by holy men of old as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And it's pretty much just reiterating what some of the scripture, what these scriptures say that are listed uh, at the end. So, holy scriptures, that's what we go to for our final authority. That's where we get all these doctrines from. That's why we even go to Hebrews 6 to look at this, right? Uh, the second is of the true God. Well, if we got repentance of dead works and faith toward God, we got to know who this God is. A lot of people say, I believe in God. The devils believe in God and they tremble. Uh, the Bible says, 
but we want to believe in the right God and know what it is about Him that we're supposed to believe and put our faith in. Okay, so second part of our Articles of Faith, we believe that there is one and only one living and true God, an infinite intellect, uh, intelligent spirit, maker, supreme ruler of heaven and earth. Uh, and then it goes on, obviously, talks about these three, um, three persons, uh, one God. Um, so, these are following these basic teachings. That's what Articles of Faith means, right? And, and again, I think on Wednesday nights we will go through these a little, kind of one by one, um, and uh, make it a little <laughs> simpler. I don't want to like go real deep on them. I already said we don't need to do that. <laughs> Uh, but just to establish what it is that we're standing on, okay? So, of the true God, number three, of the Holy Spirit. Obviously, He is God, uh, but it defines a little bit more about His role. Uh, of the devil or Satan, what do we believe about the devil and Satan, right? Uh, that's uh, the next on the list of creation. A lot of people have different views about creation, and so, uh, our Articles of Faith kind of spell out the basics of what we believe uh, in regards to creation, of the fall of man, of the virgin birth, of the atonement for sins, of grace in the new creation, of the freeness of salvation, of justification. I don't feel bad about skipping over these since we're going to go through them on Wednesdays. Uh, of the church, of baptism and the Lord's Supper, of the perseverance of the saints. Some people say preservation of the saints. Um, of the righteous and the wicked, of civil government, of the resurrection and return of Christ uh, and related events, of missions, of the grace of giving. All right, so that's our Articles of Faith, which represents a pretty big portion, probably the maybe the majority of this uh, this document here. So it's okay, it's right. We obviously this, these are the things we're preaching, and so we want to do those. But remember, he, the point of Hebrews was to say we want to do those things which accompany salvation and go beyond these basic doctrines. We want to know how to live. We want to know how to how to love our neighbors and love each other. We want to know how to uh, pray. You know, we want to know what church is all about and how we conduct ourselves in the house of God. We want to know how to love our families and how to raise a family and uh, all these, educate our kids and all these kinds of things that Christians need to do. And unfortunately, some people go down really deep, but then when it comes to applying these things and actually living the Christian life, they don't, they're lost. They don't know what to do. Okay, so, when it comes to a church, the church, it's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Look at chapter 10 now, Hebrews chapter 10. Starting verse 19, having therefore, brethren, okay, so all this uh, in between, again, he talked about the old covenant and the new covenant, and he's, he's ex explaining why we now have to have church the way that it is. And why there's authority in the church and all these instructions. Okay, this is all, uh, it all, one thing leads to another. But then we come back to chapter 10 and it gets back to the purpose of why we're having this, uh, why, we're, why we have this institution. Okay, verse 19. Uh, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holy, holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has cons uh, consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, of course, this is talking about Jesus. We don't have a high priest. We don't have priests anymore. Uh, let us draw nigh, um, draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an, evil, uh, from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Okay, And then it explains again why we need to keep doing these things as Christians. Why we need to keep meeting together and hold each other accountable. D uh, discipline is an important part of, have, of a church. 
um, enforcing certain rules and stuff like that so that we can keep the house of God holy so we don't have to uh, face God's wrath. Okay, you say, well, God, uh, man, we, we posted a message on a different preacher preached it, but uh, it's, it's our most viewed message on, on YouTube in, in Kansas City work. And, uh, and it was called The Fear of God. And, you know, he's talking about how we, we ought to fear God. Even as Christians, we ought to fear God. And would you believe how, how, you wouldn't believe how many people got on there and said, how dare you say we need to fear God? We shouldn't fear God. And they're saying like, you know, oh, he's so loving. He's so kind. You know, we have no reason to fear him if we're saved. Uh, we're not under his wrath and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, what? Have you read the Bible? We're not under his wrath in the sense that we're not going to hell. You know, obviously we're going to heaven if we're saved. But you mean to tell me you think you can just in this life live however you want and God's not going to do anything about it? You're going to be punished in this life. Now, thankfully, that has no bearing on whether or not you go to heaven, but he's going to chasten those who he loves, just like a father chastens his son. Were you afraid of your father? Now, some people would say, like, oh, you shouldn't be afraid of your father. Well, you should have enough fear to know that if I do something wrong, he's going to correct me. And that's a, that's a healthy fear. It's not like you're afraid of a monster or something like that. Uh, but we're supposed to fear God. It says He's a consuming fire right here in, in Hebrews. And so we need to come to church, provoke one another to good works. Uh, again, disciplining is even a, a, a real reality in the church. We need to make sure people aren't um, bringing a bad testimony. And so this is where... We would come into now, how do we conduct ourselves in a church? How do we even be a church? And so we've already talked about that a little bit with membership last week. And uh, the next part of what's in this document right here, we already talked about articles of faith. Now we come to constitution and bylaws. Okay, and I'm not going to go real deep on this. I know I don't have time and, and it's not certainly not very interesting. But we will, uh, again, on Wednesday, start going through these a little at a time where it won't be so, uh, so overwhelming. <clears throat> constitution and bylaws. Here's the definition of constitution. A body of fundamental principles or established pre uh, precedents according to which a state or other organization is acknowledged to be governed. Okay, we're not a state. We're an institution, that God ordained, right? And we ha need a, a body of fundamental principles that we agree on. This is how we are going to govern ourselves. Okay, that's all a constitution means. And so we do have constitution and bylaws as a section of this, uh, of this document. Now, interestingly, there's, it, it leaves out, surprisingly, um, on the bylaws part, which I'll talk about here in a minute, it leaves out some things that I would think would be really important to our gov to the government, like uh, things that that in order to to be considered a church, you know, by the government's uh, eyes, uh, leaves out some things that I feel like probably should be there. Surprisingly, when you go through there, but a constitution though has more to do with how we are going to govern ourselves. All right, so look at chapter ten. Uh, well, we just we just read it. Uh, it's, it's talking about holding fast to our profession of faith without wavering. All right. This kind of goes back to chapter six, where he says, do those things which accompany salvation. Move on to perfection and leave those principal things. Okay. Now we know what it is that we believe. What are we going to do about it? Right. We're going to, how are we going to go forward as a church? And so we need something that says we are in agreement that these are what, what we're going to do. And so the articles of faith, First of all, they preface again what we believe, just kind of the basic, like a basic creed, if you will. And then it talks about membership, which we read last, um, last week. And it gives a little bit of a guidelines for how we're going to, you know, have a membership, what that's going to look like. Uh, the reception of members, the dismissal of members, uh, the duties of the members. And it talks about the different officers. Uh, the qualification, that'd be the pastor, deacon, um, goes through some of their things that are uh, um, expected out of them. And then the last part of this is called bylaws. Okay, let me give you the definition of a bylaw. 
by law is a set of rules or laws established by an organization or community so as to regulate itself as allowed or provided for by some higher authority. Okay, so a bylaw, right? Um, I don't want to get into etymology because I didn't look it up and I'll probably say it wrong. <laughs> okay, but you can kind of see like it's not our laws. Our laws are our constitution. Our bylaws are going to be what our authority, which with the government. Now don't get, don't, you know, don't misunderstand me. God's our authority, okay? But in order to conduct ourselves in the, this land that we live in, there are certain things that we need to abide by. Okay, now, we ought to have to obey God rather than man. So if they tell us to do something contrary to the Bible, that's a time in which we're willing to break that, break that law and obey God rather than man. Okay, but for the most part, there's no, they're not really expecting anything of us that's, that's like outside of, at this point, as far as I know, outside of what the Bible uh, constitutes. So, if you look over real quickly at 1 Peter chapter 2, First Peter chapter 2, look at verse 13. <clears throat> Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment, punishment of evildoers. Uh, and governor there has to do with more like law enforcers. And uh, for the praise of them that do well, for so it is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Now, again, who is our final authority? God, for sure. But God says, hey, live peaceably. As much as lieth within you, live peaceably with all men. So when... The law enforcement comes, your first thought doesn't need to be, hey, they don't, you know, it's we the people. Like, I, I pay your salary. You know what I mean? And start having this aggressive, like, response towards them. Now, there comes a point from that as an American citizen where if we have our rights infringed upon, yeah, you might have to stand up for your rights and all that kind of stuff. But as Christians, first and foremost, we ought to be like, you know what, let's just... Make sure we're obeying the, the laws, you know, uh, not getting into trouble, not causing a, a, a stir. You know, the, the, we, we need to uh, understand that there are certain laws and principles out there. Now, I say that because there are people out there that are like, well, a church, a government shouldn't have anything to do with church, which I believe separation of church and state. They should leave us alone. And we shouldn't try to force them, you know, force the government to uh, adopt our, our beliefs entirely, okay? Uh, it's just kind of like a dual, you know, it's, it's cooperation here, okay? You leave us alone, we'll leave you alone. That's the way it should be, church and state, okay? <clears throat> but, obviously, anybody can just call themselves a church and do whatever they want and avoid paying taxes and, and uh, uh create all kinds of problems or whatever. So there are certain laws that our government says, hey, these need to be in place if somebody's going to call themselves a church. Is that really that bad? Are they really hurting us? You know, because all these, uh, there, there are people out there that are like, oh, you don't need to be uh, worried about what the government says and you don't need to make sure that you have all the documents and that you're following all these laws. Well, <clears throat> up until the point where they tell me to do something that contradicts what the Bible says, they're not hurting anything. Like if I can, you know, just like we pay taxes. I don't want to pay taxes, right? But, but I have to. If I don't pay taxes, I'm going to get in trouble. And so why not just live peaceably with, with, uh, with the government, okay? And so, uh, uh, so this is why our church, yeah, we do have a section in here that everyone wants to dismiss bylaws. Who cares about bylaws? Who cares about following the rules? And who cares about doing all this stuff? Well, there are certain things that are, um, required for us as a church operating in this land that we live in. There's nothing unbiblical about conceding to that to the best of our ability. Okay, so, you know, this is going to have to do with, you know, certain legal standpoints about having trustees and, and uh, different 
different things that you know will, will be in regards to uh, um, working with the government. Okay, to some extent, they, they we're not working with them, but uh, you know, just to provide our our you know conduct ourselves as an actual church. And so, uh, and it comes to even to like having the business meetings where we are, have a records of what we spend and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But one of the, I mean, that's just common sense for us to do anyway. But one of the reasons we do that is to, um, you know, to not break any of those laws. You know, we don't pay, have to pay taxes as a church at this point. Uh, but there are certain things that we uh, have to uh, have in, in, in line. <clears throat> all right. So, so as not to go through all these and bore anybody, I'd put everybody to sleep for sure. Uh, that's just a brief overview of articles of faith versus constitution and bylaws. We already talked about the church covenant that's in there. And don't be overwhelmed by those words or those concepts as like, oh, well, I thought we we're supposed to be talking about the Bible. Well, we are talking about the Bible. The Bible tells us to conduct ourselves in an orderly fashion and to uh, submit ourselves to the ordinances of man to the to, to you know whatever ex extent that we can without disobeying God. And then first and foremost, obviously we want to conduct ourselves in a manner which pleases the Lord. And so that's what we preach about. That's what we you know we go out and we preach the gospel and uh, all these things. We encourage each other. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Uh, we hold people accountable, make sure they're doing the things that they're supposed to do. And, and all of these are to further the kingdom of God, just uh, is what he established the church to do anyway. So, hope that helps clarify a few things. Again, no, it's not exciting. I know it's not a, uh, something that you'll want to listen to again, <laughs> but uh, uh, hopefully it's helpful. And it also is going to lead to what we talk about as we go forward with the work of Kansas City and, um, you know, lead into the, the next series, if you will, on the articles of faith and such, so that we can know that we're all on the same page as a church as we set off to, you know, like I said, get healthy, rebuild this church, get uh, uh, the Lord to uh, send us laborers and send us people to uh, disciple. Father, we thank you for your word and for this church. I thank you for those who've been faithful for so many years. I pray for those who couldn't be here tonight that you uh, it would help them be with them, heal those that are sick. And, and uh, once again, Lord, we uh, ask for you to help us in preparation for this Sunday. Looking forward to a great time of, of uh, fellowship and uh, uh, spending time with the, the work with the church out in Kansas City and, and uh, encouraging one another. And I pray, Lord, that you'll just be with uh, all that in preparations and be with the service be with everybody as they travel back and forth to be safe. And, and I pray you have your will and way. God and direct, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, let's stand and be dismissed with one song.